I'm Milo, our Conservation Communications Manager, and today I'm joined by one of our amazing animal ambassadors. But I do have additional company that I want to introduce you to. I am joined by Ben, one of our education team members, and he is going to be introducing you to our animal ambassador friend. So Ben, go ahead, take it away and introduce us. All right, thank you, Milo. So as Milo mentioned, this is Rosie, and I'm going to scoop her up out of here so we can get a better look at her. There we go, Rosie. So Rosie here is a Chilean rose tarantula. Uh, she comes from the high desert uh, altitude mountains areas of Chile, as well as Bolivia in South America. Um, she is a nocturnal animal. So as we talk about adaptations here, keep that in mind. She likes to come out mainly at night, almost only at night. One of the main reasons for that is because as we know in the deserts, it can get extremely hot during the day. Uh, and when you are a small creature, very high temperatures can be a uh, hard on your body. So coming out at night is one of the ways that she avoids those really high temperatures uh, and stays cool. Now during the day though, uh, she likes to stay mostly underground. Uh, she will live in burrows in the, mount or in the deserts, I should say. Uh, and as you can see, she doesn't have any big claws or big feet to help her dig burrows. So what she actually does is she will steal burrows from other animals. So she will find a burrow, typically unoccupied, and she will make that burrow her own. Uh, she'll start to build some of her webs in there uh, and take over that burrow and use it for her own home area couple other cool adaptations you guys might notice on her. She has four sets of legs. So she has eight total legs uh, that help her move around in the desert. They are a little bit sticky on the ends, which help her climb uh, up on rocks and any sort of plant structures that she may find uh, in the desert. She is also covered in hairs. So again, being a Chilean rose tarantula, she has these kind of reddish or rose colored hairs. Uh, those hairs are very, very different from ours. They don't serve quite the same purpose as keeping us warm. Uh, her hairs can actually sense vibrations. So as things start to move uh, around her at night or things start to move her webs, she can actually sense that through the hairs that cover her body. Another really fascinating adaptation of her hairs uh, you guys might notice on her thorax, or sorry, her abdomen, uh, tarantulas, they have a head and an abdomen. The abdomen is the rear part of her body. Uh, you may notice that she's missing some of her hairs back there. Tarantulas actually have the ability to throw the hairs that are on their body. Again, that is something very different from what our hairs do. Our hairs may fall out, but we cannot shoot them out whenever we choose to. They do this to protect themselves. Uh, again, they don't have big, uh, sharp claws. They don't have a lot of scary teeth. Uh, they don't have wings to fly away, obviously. So having hairs that they can shoot off of their body at their predators uh, is a great defensive mechanism. And those hairs, when they get into the predator's eyes and nose and mouth, they make it extremely itchy. And I don't know about you guys, but I would not like to eat something that made me really, really itchy. Uh, that does not sound like something very fun to me. Now let's talk about Rosie's eating habits. She is a very, very ferocious hunter. Uh, she comes out at night to catch her prey that might be moving around. So she's gonna be eating things uh, mostly like crickets, cockroaches, grasshoppers, moths, some small lizards, other small arachnids or other types of spiders that may be in the desert. Uh, they've even been known to eat the occasional scorpion, which is pretty neat. Um, now, in order to eat her food, uh, she doesn't, like I said, have a very large mouth or large teeth, but she does have fangs and those fangs do have venom in them. Uh, so her venom, she is a venomous animal. Now that might seem kind of crazy, I'm letting this venomous animal walk around on my hands, but her venom does not affect humans uh, very much. You might get a bit of a rash, you might be a little bit itchy, but her venom is meant to affect the things that she eats, uh, which again are gonna be those crickets and other small invertebrates or insects. 
Well, Ben, thank you so much for introducing us to this amazing animal ambassador. I hope that all of you listening along learned something new about Rosie and her very unique adaptations to survive in her desert-like environment out in the wild. Now, what I want to encourage all of you to do at home is go ahead and check out our caption and comment section for your guided Z learning activity for this Friday. We want all of you to get a little creative and think about what adaptations might help to have other animals survive in other habitats. Obviously not all species have eight legs like Rosie here. So what adaptations come to mind when maybe you creatively think of a brand new species that you could draw up or dream up. We encourage you all to comment, share those different ideas, add them to your Z Learning Journal, or add them to the comments right here on Facebook.